According to the anime series Cells at Work, if you've ever had the flu, essentially you have survived a zombie apocalypse. Cells at Work returns for a third episode, which is here to educate, entertain, and to make us laugh. This was another super fun episode of Cells at Work, which I really love because, one, even though it doesn't really have any, like, solid characterization or anything, this is all about the personification of what goes on every single day in your body. And I love how they can take something so minor, such as germs or bacteria or even something such as the common flu, and they transform it into this massive epidemic. And they manage to have fun with it, inject a lot of action, as well as a ton of humor. And while at the end, I'm like, wow, I never knew any of this stuff was ever actually going on in my body. I can imagine that a lot of medical students are absolutely just eating up this anime series, and for good reason. It's really entertaining, and it really makes me interested to learn a little bit more about the processes and things which go on inside of your body every day. This episode right here is all about influenza, otherwise known as the common flu. It's something that I think we've all gone through many, many times, which essentially just results in us going to bed, eating chicken soup, drinking Sprite, and just sleeping it all off. Here, though, it is a big, epic battle where all of the most important parts of your body come together to fight against a massive virus, which is essentially a zombie apocalypse. That's right, the influenza virus is actually treated like zombies in this episode, where common cells are transformed into these creepy zombified forms of themselves, which have these heads which make them look like a zombie version of Toad from Super Mario Brothers. They go around spreading their virus all over the place, trying to proliferate and destroy everything in their wake. They also make it clear that there are three different types of influenza, A, B, and C, with A being the most dangerous. But the virus that we see in this this episode is a B-level virus and something that a lot of the white blood cells and the killer T cells can take care of. That's their job to deal with germs, bacteria, and infected cells. But most of this episode actually focuses on a new character who is a naive T cell. Basically what this means is it's an immature T-cell, and if you remember, the T-cells in this show are basically like frat guys, and this naive T-cell is the exact opposite of them. He's small, he looks like a little kid, he's incredibly scared of everything, afraid of even going up against the influenza virus. The reason all of this is funny is because there's actually drama added in this episode with a cell that is quite literally has no confidence in itself. It's hilarious, and he gets his chops constantly busted by all of his comrades, which I also think is very funny. But again, this episode actually manages to educate. Even though these things are immature T-cells, which have never even destroyed anything in their life, we get to learn that there's another part of your body known as the dendrite cells, which can actually activate these things, when it basically transforms them into a giant, muscle-bound JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character. It's at this point that the entire episode just kicks into high gear, and they start introducing all of these brand new things at a rapid pace. One, we finally get to see the macrophage in this episode, which is this cute looking maid girl with a giant freaking hatchet, and her job is to not only kill bacteria and even infected T-cells, but also to relay this message to the commander T-cell, who then gives the information out to everyone. Basically, this episode demonstrated how the body actually works together to communicate with everyone to fight back against viruses, diseases, and germs. And the way that it's shown off in this episode is like a giant zombie apocalypse which is slowly enveloping everything is absolutely genius and really funny all at the same time. It's also great that they actually managed to interject a little more cool action into the show. Watching the uh, white blood cells is always fun, but the killer T cells were a ton of fun in this episode as well. We even get this uh, one thing that comes in which uh, can create antibodies, which is personified as this kid with this giant freaking ridiculous looking gun, which sprays this crap all over the place. It's just... It's amazing seeing all of these things working together and how this is all stuff that just goes on every day. That's what's so fascinating about Cells at Work. If you wanted to see a little bit more of Red Blood Cell, unfortunately she's not really in that episode all that much. Basically just there to react to some of the major events that are going on here. I think we shouldn't expect any solid characterization from Cells at Work. We literally just need to take it for what it is. And that seems to be the theme of every single episode so far, where they're, they're focusing on like a certain sickness or a disease of some kind, this one focusing on the flu. And in the next one, we're going to get something completely different and just seeing how the body reacts to it, the cells that are at work, pun intended, and seeing it at what they can do to fight against all of these things. It's just 
a crazy experience and you need to see it for yourself. So what's the rundown on this episode of Cells at Work? A super educational and very fun experience. Again, the best thing about this show is how they can take these seemingly normal things that you never even think about and then transform them into these big, ridiculous events. And they give all of these characters some surprisingly fun personalities, but they still never break away from their job, what it is to do to help the body. I think that's really fascinating. And I don't know if the series is ever going to try and break away from that, but... I kind of hope it doesn't because this is a wholly unique anime experience and unlike anything that I've actually ever seen, the show has been compared to Osmosis Jones quite a bit. They are very similar in the sense that they're about the cells in your body that fight back against viruses. But what Osmosis Jones did is that they personified the characters to a very extreme degree. We actually got to see those characters interacting with people like in real life, having distinct personalities. Here, these are things that are constantly working. They have no social life. This is their role. This is what they do 24-7 every single day of the week. And that is what makes it wholly unique. Now, who knows how things could possibly change in the future, but for what it is right now, this is the most badass educational show that I've ever seen. So, I'm going to give this episode another 5 out of 5. This show is just so fun, incredibly informative, and one of the most unique anime experiences that I've ever had. It sells at work, and you definitely need to check it out. If any of you guys did watch this episode, make sure to tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. Did you have any favorite scenes from this episode? Any favorite funny moments? What do you hope to see from the rest of Cells at Work? Are you actually learning something? Let's start a discussion in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, stay down there, baby.